What advice would you have for people who are maybe interested in doing this type of malware analyst, you know, either as a job or career or as a, on a continuum, but didn't get into computer science, you know, early on and might feel like they've fallen behind? Are there ways to woodshed, woodshed your way into this type of work, even if you don't have, you know, a background in, in this area? Yeah, I'd say resoundingly yes. And I want to I want to tell you a story, if you'll indulge me for a minute. Please. So, uh, one of my former students, and I'm not going to name him or her okay. uh, to respect their privacy, but I remember. So we'll say him just for <laughs> just to make it easy. So I have um, mm -hmm. some of you to refer to, and we'll give him the random name Chris. Okay, right? just because I can see that on my screen. That right makes now. me feel very special. <laughs> so I remember Chris. I remember getting a knock on my door. This is when I was a department head. And, and there's Chris standing there. And Chris, Chris says, I'm in the blah industry, nothing related to computing whatsoever. I never went to college. I want to join, I want to go and pull, I want to be a, one of the world's best malware analysts. That's what I want to do. I said, okay. And this was a life, lifetime learner. Right. Mm -hmm. So not not a typical student. They'd been in the workforce for, you know, a decent chunk of time. And and I looked at Chris uh, and I'm like, you know, this is going to be hard, Chris. Right. Here are, here are the skills that you don't have. We're going to have to get you these basic skills brushed back up before we can even enter you in. the. And he said, Dr. Ford, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to do this. I am going to do this. Well, Chris would show up at my office at all hours, make use of office hours. I did admit him to the program after he picked up a couple of missing things. Um, and he struggled and it was hard. And he would be at my door every time I had an office hour. You know, it would be the same student showing up. And uh, he went from not so good to good to great to really, really great as mm. he sort of... He just ground his way through. He had every reason not to succeed. Right. And is now a very successful malware analyst. And I think of him or her, um, you know, very, very frequently um, when I think about what can be done, when you just go, no, I'm going to master this skill set. I don't care that I don't have the background. Yep. I don't care that I'm going to have to brush up on some of my more basic skills to, to do this. I'm going to do it because that's what I'm going to do. And so... I would encourage anybody, if their heart's really in it, but it's going to require focused effort, mindful, focused effort. Yep. As, as I used to remind students, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. So if you're doing it wrong and you practice doing it wrong, you'll always yep. do it wrong. Right. Um, the goal is do it perfectly and understand every step along the way. And, and I've met many students like that who are living proof that you can walk in to this discipline, knowing absolutely nothing about computing, but just knowing that you really want to do it and go through and come out the other side and be very successful. But it requires one thing of you, and that's persistence. And yeah. being persistent is extremely challenging. It, it's hard, right, to continually have that time over target, to, to sit and be, st a, lot of, a lot of us now, because of the internet, we're not used to being stuck. Right. So in the words, if you can't solve a problem in five minutes, the problem's impossible. Yes. Now, if you want to be a malware, if you want to learn your way into malware analysis and from a totally non-technical background, you better be ready to be stuck for days on yes. some hurdles. But the lesson you learn by getting over that little mountain will stand you in good stead for the rest of your life. Yeah. So what you can do is if your heart is set on it, don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it or that you're not good enough to do it or that you're not smart enough to do it. As long as you just have to take a reasonable assessment of your skills yep. and then put the time in, right? Because is it a job anybody can do? No, sadly, it's not. There are some people who just, God didn't make them that way, right? Right? They're just wired differently. They're not wired the same as me. There's something else that maybe they should, they should do. But um, if, you, if you know you have the interest, you know you could learn the skills. Don't let anybody look, look at you and go, you're too old. You're not qualified. You didn't get the right you know, college diploma. Right. Just recognize it's going to take you time and energy. And I have you know, my set of poster children who went, no, Dr. Ford, I can do this, and did. 
New episodes of the Cyberwork Podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things cyberwork.